Before we get into nuclear physics, we must discuss and define several important terms and quantities. And that's exactly what we're going to do in this lecture. So we're going to briefly discuss atomic structure. So let's begin by defining what an electron is. So in quantum mechanics, we have the wave particle duality of matter. So basically matter can not only act as particles, but it can also act as waves. In fact, in quantum mechanics, we can use the Schrodinger equation to solve it for a mathematical equation that represents our electron as a wave. And this equation is known as the wave function. So in quantum mechanics, electrons are often depicted as waves and we represent our electrons using equations known as wave functions and if we take the square of the absolute value of the wave function that basically gives us the probability density of finding our electron around some region around the center of our atom now even though quantum mechanics tells us that there is some probability of finding our electron in the nucleus of our atom, the probability is so small that for all approximation pur uh, purposes, we can imagine that the electron is found somewhere in close proximity around our nucleus of our atom. Now, every electron has a certain intrinsic property known as mass and, and, and charge. So basically, every electron has a mass given by 9.11 times 10 to negative 31 kilograms and a charge of negative 1.6 times 10 to negative 19 coulombs. Now, let's move on to the subatomic entities that exist within a region we call the nucleus. Now, even though we still do not know what the nucleus of our atom actually looks like, experiments and the quantum mechanical theory suggests that we can imagine the nucleus to consist of two subatomic entities we call the nucleons. One of these nucleons being the proton and the second nucleon being our, um, our neutron. Now, although these nucleons also behave as waves just as electrons do, we could make the assumption, we could think of these two nucleons as being particles. And so we can imagine that the proton and the neutron is found in this condensed region, in this concentrated region we call the nucleus. And the electron creates this electron density, this electron probability distribution around the nucleus of the atom as shown. And and although based on quantum mechanics, there is some probability of actually finding our electron inside our nucleus, the probability is so small that for all approximation purposes, we can assume that the electron is found somewhere around this uh, nucleus in this blue region as shown by this electron density. Now, just like an electron has an intrinsic electric charge and a mass, protons and neutrons also have a charge and a mass. Now, the mass of the proton is given by this quantity, about 1.67262 times 10 to negative 27 kilograms, and the mass of the neutron is slightly higher. It's 1.67493 times 10 to negative 27 kilograms. Now, both of our proton and neutron have a greater mass than the mass of the electron by about 1,800 times as much. And that's exactly why we usually neglect the mass of our electron when we're calculating the atomic mass, as we'll see in just a moment. Now, our proton also has a charge, and the quantity of charge is equal to the quantity on our 
our electron, but it's opposite in sign. So we define an electron to have a negative charge, and we define the proton to have a positive charge. And this was chosen completely arbitrarily. Now, the charge of our neutron is zero, and that's exactly why we call a neutron a neutron, because it has a neutral charge. Now, as we mentioned earlier, so we said that our neutron and proton create a very concentrated region known as the nucleus. In fact, the nucleus is extremely concentrated. It's extremely dense. It's about 1 times 10 to the 15 times as dense as a solid, uh, as a solid structure. Now, as a result of the wave-particle duality of nature, of matter, atoms do not have a well-defined atomic radius because our electron, our proton, and neutron are actually waves. They can actually behave as waves, so it's very difficult to define what the radius of our atom is. Nevertheless, we can still approximate the radius of the nucleus using the following equation and we can imagine that the radius begins at the center of the nucleus and ends at the outer region of our electron cloud. So basically the radius of our atom is approximately equal to the following product. The product of this quantity 1.5 times 10 to negative 15 meters and we take this quantity and raise to the power of one third where this gives us the number of nucleons inside the nucleus of our atom. So we see as the number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus increases, the radius of our atom also increases. Now, we can actually use this equation in the following example in which we're going to compare the radii of the hydrogen atom that has one proton in the nucleus and zero neutrons to one of the largest atoms known as uranium, which has a total atomic mass of 238 unified atomic mass units. So basically, to compare the radii of the these two atoms, we can set up a ratio. So the radius of uranium, which has many more protons and neutrons, to the radius of our H atom. So we would expect that the radius of the uranium is greater than the radius of the H atom, and so this ratio should be a number that is greater than 1. So let's plug in our numbers. So we know that these two values are the same. We can cross them out. Now 238 to the power of one third, this should be one third, divided by one to the power of one third, and this, this gives us a value of about 6.2. So we see that the radius of the uranium atom is about 6.2 times as large as the radius of the hydrogen atom. Now, in this, in this following section, in the final section, we're going to discuss the atomic mass. So any element, any atom, has a certain unique value of mass to it. So if we know the number of protons, the number of electrons, and the number of neutrons, we can calculate what the atomic mass is. So the atomic mass of an atom is given by taking the sum of the protons, neutrons, and electrons. Now, Normally, if we are making an approximation because the mass of the proton and neutron is so much greater than the mass of our electron, we usually neglect the mass of the electron and to calculate the atomic mass, we simply calculate the mass of the protons and the neutrons in our nucleus. Now, since the mass of a single atom is very, very small, we define a, microsco a microscopic unit of mass called the unified atomic mass units, which is simply given by the lowercase symbol u. 
Now, one unified atomic mass unit is equal to 1.66054 times 10 to negative 27 kilograms. So basically, if we want to convert, let's say, 12 unified atomic mass units, the atomic mass of carbon, into kilograms, we simply multiply this by 12. Now we know from Einstein's uh, famous equation, E equals mc squared, if we're dealing with a stationary atom, that mass of the atom can readily be transformed into energy by the energy mass equivalence. So basically, if we know what the mass is and we multiply it by the square of the speed of light, that will give us the energy that this mass can be transformed into. And this this is very often used in nuclear physics as we'll see.